Let's talk about the objective function of democratized and decentralized AI. Um, is it that the compute is resonant um, in countries around the world? Is it that the models are owned by the citizens of the world? Is it that data is owned? Um, and how do you get there from here? I think that um, you can think of the supercomputers like universities. Mm -hmm. You don't need many universities, honestly. If someone's building good quality models, that's one of the things, as I said, was stability. And we did the hard task. We could have just stuck with image. We said, no, we're going to have the best 3D image, audio, biomedical, all these models. And no one else managed that apart from OpenAI to agree. In fact, I think we have more modalities than OpenAI. Again, kind of what I kind of describe this book is accessibility and governance and a few of these other factors. So I think what it means is that this technology is available to everyone. But you see now that you don't necessarily need giant supercomputers to even run it. You know, we show, showed you a language model running on a laptop, stable on M2. We'll run on a gigabyte on a MacBook Air, faster than you can read. You know, we're writing some poems about various things, you know. Um, we see stable diffusion now at 300 images a second with a consumer graphics card. Our video model was like 5 gigabytes of VRAM. This really changes the equation because in Web 2, all the intelligence was centralized on these giant servers and big data. Now you have big supercomputers, and I think you'll need less with better data. Training these graduates that can go out and customize to each country, but they must reflect the culture of that country. Like the Japanese stable diffusion model we had, if you typed in salary man, it gave you a very sad person versus the base model giving you a very happy person, right? So you must have graduates that reflect the local culture and then reflect the local knowledge. And then global models, again, that reflect our global knowledge and can be accessed by anyone. But who decides what goes in there? These are some very important questions. And who vouches for the quality as well? What's your advice to a, a national leader? Because you know, we're now starting to see ministers of AI in different nation states. And what... What's your advice to them right now in this area? I think my advice to them would be to start collecting the data sets that they would teach a graduate that was very smart through school and kind of other things. This is national broadcast data. This is the curriculum. This is their accounting, legal, and others. And note that those data sets are infrastructure. They will enable the local populace and others to create these models because models are just data wrapped in algorithms with a bit of compute. That's the recipe. Compute, algorithms, and data. And it's not going to be as hard as you think to train these models, but you have to build them to good standards. So by the end of next year, probably a year after, I would estimate that a Llama 70B model or a stable diffusion model, so these are two leading models in image and language, will cost about under $10,000 probably even $1,000 to train. And then it comes all about the data and then it becomes about the standards. You know, it's, it's, it, it's interesting. Um, there is so much knowledge in the world that will vaporize, sublimate over the decade ahead as people die. You know, uh, cultural data locked up in people's minds and stories and so forth that's never been recorded. It's an interesting time to actually capture that data and permanently store it into uh, the national models. Yeah, and again, I think people overfocus on the models versus the data sets. I mean, it's data sets, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the exponential compute, you can recalibrate and improve the data as well. So we're, right now, a lot of the improvements in models are actually synthetically improving data and data quality. Um, as you said, there's so much that can be lost, but now we can actually capture this and the concepts and the other guidance and have cross-checks, like you can deconstruct laws. You know, you can translate between contexts. You can make expert information available to everyone because, again, you have this new continent of AI Atlantis and all these graduates soon to be specialists that are on your phone. And that's incredibly democratizing, you know, um, because otherwise, the knowledge is throughout history, knowledge has always been gatekept, always.